Hi guys, Dr. Jiller here again. This is video number six and we are going to talk about the formation of the neural tube. Uh, in video five we talked about formation of the nodal chordal process and the nodal cord and this is a continuation. In fact I might even lump these two together but in case I don't I made a new kind of uh, intro for this. So let's get into formation of this neural tube, which is super important, right? This thing gives rise to all sorts of stuff, including the important neural crest cells. Okay, so let's build the neural tube and neural crest cells. The process of building the neural tube is called neurulation. Neurulation, and it's four main stages that we need to go through to build this. First, we have to cause the the ectoderm cells to morph into a neural plate then we need to shape the neural plate into a key like structure and then we need to roll the edges of the neural plate fold them up uh, to start forming a tube that's called lateral folding and then finally we need to pinch the neural folds or together to form what's called the neural tube and the crest cells are formed about that time as well so let's get to it. Step one was to form the neural plate, so let's talk about that. So meet the neural ectoderm cells. About day 18, and remember in the last video we said there's a lot of stuff going on simultaneously here. A little bit of gastrulation, we're getting toward the gastrulation is going on here, so we're forming a mesoderm in the germ layers. Uh, we formed the nodal cord, is pretty much formed. But day 18 the, uh, is when the uh, primitive node in the nodal cord, they induce, they send little proteins into the cells above them. Uh, and it in, that's inducing, it induces the ectoderm cells in the cranial region to morph into a different, taller cell type. Uh, and those uh, cells are called neuroectoderm cells now because they're not like the regular ectoderm cells. They're stronger, they're thicker, uh, and their neural tissue, they have different junctional uh, complexes or CAMs, if you call them. And uh, we've got a new cell type above. In fact, here's a nodal cord in this cartoon. And here's the reg, I didn't draw the cells in, but here's the ectoderm cells that would have went right here. But the nodal cord is releasing some transcription factors and other uh, proteins that have told the DNA in these cells above it to morph into a new cell type. And they've gotten very tall and strong and they've become neural tissue. And so these are, uh, they used to be the just run of the mill ectoderm cells, but now, um, actually because of a lack of BMP, uh, is one thing that's been turned off in these, they turn into neural ectoderm cells. This is a flat plate-like structure where in the cranial region here uh, of the embryonic disc, and these are called neural ectoderm cells. The flat, because it's flat, it's also called a neural plate. Okay, pretty much everything I've talked about, uh, this conversion of, uh, of the epithelial type ectoderm cells into neural tissue is called neural induction. Collectively, these new cells make up the neural plate or the neural ectoderm. You, these are, you can kind of use these simultaneously or interchangeably. And this is the very first central nervous system. So this is the birth of the central nervous system in the cranial region. It's going to turn into the brain. Uh, as it tapers and goes backwards, it's going to be the spinal cord and spine. So the CNS is born right there. Super important. Pretty good with that. Uh, as we mentioned, this occurs in the cranial region first. And here's an overhead view of we're used to looking at this structure. So the neural plate has formed here. You can see the nodal cord underneath has induced its formation. Primitive node has helped as well give off some transcription factors that have soaked into these cells. But here you go. This is our early first. Uh, this will be the develop into the brain eventually. Um, but for right now, let's just call it the neural plate, which is made of neuroectoderm cells. 
Okay, and that's just kind of labeled everything for you. You can see the nodal cord. Remember that's between the ectoderm and endoderm, so it's just a dotted line, so it's deep to this. Okay, same with the precord. Remember the nodal cord in the last video bumped into the precordal plate, so it doesn't grow any far, further than that. Okay, uh, now what induces the ectoderm to become a neuroectoderm? There are proteins and genes that are turned on from the nodal cord and primitive node that do this process. The anterior mesoderm, mesoendoderm region, which is a fancy way to say nodal cord and precordal plate, um, they also, I mean, we talked about nodal cord array, but precordal plate is part of this region. There's also genes turned on and it's secreting transcription factors as well. And then the AVE cells, the anterior visceral endoderm is also uh, pitching in. But mainly the nodal cord and primitive node are what causes the cells to morph uh, into a plate. What is the trick to making a neural uh, plate? Or making neuroectoderm cells. The trick is to turn off something called bone morphogenetic protein. And uh, there's other BMPs involved too. Carlson says four is the big one, but uh, BMPs in general are turned off. If you turn off BMPs in a cell, it's going to become neural tissue. Uh, so that's the trick. The trick is to release transcription factors to turn off the genes that normally are turned on. Uh, endo, uh, endoderm cell or ectoderm cells normally secrete BMPs, uh, BMP4 in particular. Um, but so if you turn those off, you're going to form the neural tissue that we need to make the neural plate. So the next question is, who turns off BMP4? Uh, well, the primitive node secretes two BMP inhibitors that drift up, float up, and soak into the cells the ectoderm cells above and they turn off BMP genes and that's noggin and cordon are the big ones there. Uh, the other nodal cord and AVE cells and precordal plate uh, also secrete a BMP inhibitor called SIR1. SIR1 also turns off BMP4 and other BMPs for that matter. Uh, so those are the transcription factors or proteins you can call them that drift up soak into the cells and turn off BMP4 which causes the cells to thicken and get very tall into the neural plate. There's some junctional complexes remember the the ectoderm is uh, a epithelial tissue so it's held very tightly together by EC adherens which we talked about in a previous video uh, those are junctional complexes or CAM, some authors call them uh, cell adhesion molecules. Uh, so uh, we have to turn those off. They're not turned on in neural tissue. And so the NK adherens are turned, our E K adherens are turned off, but we still have to hold that neural plate together. So uh, ones called NK adherens are turned on. Okay. Uh, what does the neural plate do? It's going to give rise to the brain toward the cranial end. We're going to see how it tapers uh, and gives rise to the spinal cord uh, toward the caudal end. It also gives rise to the retina and some other structures as well. And for you guys studying for boards, these are good questions. You, you, board questions like, like the neural plate will become blank and blank, brain and spinal cord. So it's good to know what this tissue turns into. Okay, let's go through. We've made the neural plate. Now let's elongate it because we just got really the brain part of it. So we're going to elongate it uh, caudally uh, and make it a key like structure. So here's our uh, what we had before. Now we're going to make it grow caudally or posteriorly, as these authors usually say. Um, so, how do you do that? That's the, the next step. Um, so it's going to grow in a tapered manner and it's going to look key shaped as it develops. It grows caudally via a process called convergent extension. Convergent extension. Uh, and that is a common process. The primitive streak grew through uh, convergent extension. It's a, we didn't talk about that then, but we'll talk about it now. So this means that as tissue grows from the parent, it does so in a more narrowed and tapered fashion. Uh, the cells that 
are forming caudally to make it grow, uh, they're not so strung out and, and spaced apart. They overlap each other and they scrunch closer together. That's called intercalation. They become intercalated uh, and that brings them closer together and makes the structure more narrow. And yeah, and who tells those cells to scrunch up tight like that and not be wide anymore? Uh, basically, uh, a the went gene is turned on. Uh, the went gene is is the main gene in something called planar cell polarity pathway, uh, and that's what controls this conversion extension process. I won't. It's very complex. We're not going to get into this. But went. Uh, is the main one that's turned on uh, and some receptors pop up on the cells uh, called fizzled seltzer uh, and vangel are all popped up uh, and went combined to these and it's super complex but that's how it elongates i'm not going to dig into that too much though so now we have a more normal uh, neural plate so more developed neural plate there's the future brain region it's wider but it tapers because of convergent extension it tapers as it grows back and you can see the primitive streak is now shrinking as well the nodal cord is elongating the nodal cord is right underneath the neural plate so uh, all these nodal cord is releasing all these cells inducing uh, the above ectoderm. The ectoderm cells are still there though. See they're out to the side. Uh, neural crest cells are going to form actually right on the edge here as we'll talk about uh, in a little while. Uh, but there's our key shaped uh, our key shaped neural plate. Step three. Now we got to form a tube right because we're the star of this or the, the name of this lecture is forming the neural tube and we have a plate. So lateral folding has to occur about day 18 this folding and there's many explanations have been proposed for this in fact in the first video uh, I used Singh and he uh, really easy mechanism to form the neural tube and it turns out it's not correct anymore it's old research so that's part of the reason I had to recreate this to give you more up-to-date uh, research Carlson is the I'm really liking that book it's uh, more up-to-date it's deeper and um, yeah, I won't start down that rant again. Um, but anyway, so they used to think it was a single mechanism where the mesoderm around the nodal cord, called paraxial mesoderm, would elongate and push up and form the tube. That's not uh, completely true anymore. There's a lot of mechanisms, both intrinsic and extrinsic, to the neural plate that are going on here. We're not going to talk all about them. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. But the first thing, and then we'll stay with Carlson, the first thing that happens is a median hinge point forms uh, right where the neural plate touches the nodal cord. And we're going to get a bend in the plate right there it's going to turn into a v v-like structure why does it bend is because the cells right in the very midline uh, are going to all of a sudden their apices remember the rectangular shape normally the cells at the top are going to pinch in and it's going to form a triangle the base of the cell uh, is going to become wider and therefore if you have a triangle shape within rectangle shape plate it's going to bend and that's exactly what it does. It causes a downward bend, and the neural plate is going to start to sink into the mesoderm. Let's look at a picture of this. Uh, so here's our normal um, rectangular-shaped cells of the neural plate. And, but these, the nodal cord has released some transcription factors, and it's caused it to shrink up here. The cytoskeleton pinches in, and it gets loose down here at the base. And therefore, it bends the neural plate. Pretty much as simple as that, although nothing simple with embryology, right? Who is the gene? Who tells the cell to shrink up here and widen down here? It's an easy one to remember. It's more complicated than this, but we'll keep it simple. Uh, it's called shroom, like a mushroom. So the genes in the nodal cord uh, called shroom become active and release the protein shroom, and shroom sinks in 
Uh, so a shroom is, you can't see it, it's like about as big as here. Just picture a whole bunch of little uh, little molecules sinking into these cells and it gets into the machinery here and it causes the cytoskeleton to pinch right here. So shroom is the one who does it. causes the cyto microfilaments of the cytoskeleton in the apical region or the top of the cell to contract and that causes a triangular shaped uh, neuroectoderm cell and therefore you get a V-shaped neural plate now. Okay, And where it pinches in right here uh, this is going to call be a hinge point because it's like where the bend occurs and that's going to call the median not medial the median hinge point and the downward projections now uh, of our because we don't have a plate anymore we can say there's a right and left neural fold in the valley that's been created is called the neural groove let's look at a picture uh, so here is the midline. This is that same coronal view we've been working with. Mm -hmm. And we've got some shroom released by the nodal cord, and it's caused these cells uh, to become triangular shape, and it's pinched them. It's made a V here. And this is sunk. Here's the neural plates just starting to, uh, to V. But here you can see the neural plate has sunk down into the mesoderm. This is all mesoderm right here. Uh, add this this groove right here is called the neural groove. Here's a, uh, I guess that would be the right neural fold, depending on which way we're looking. And here's the other neural fold. There's a right and left neural fold. And then don't forget, we still have our ectoderm cells here. Uh, those ectoderm cells are not happy that their brothers are converted into a new tissue. And they're trying to take back uh, the territory they lost. So these are multiplying and pushing this way. And this, this inward push of these cells is also helping to push to form the V here. So that's another, I got ahead of my slides again, but the ectoderm is helping. So as the neural plate is folding down, the ectoderm cells are growing toward the midline. And that movement helps create this big V uh, that we have. So there's growth. You know, if I could split, maybe there's, what? 15 cells here and these things are multiplying by mitosis uh, and another one is formed and another one and it's pinching this pinching pinching pretty soon eventually this is going to reclaim its property and you're going to have a a bridge here built of ectoderm cells as we'll see as this tube is formed but in the meantime it's pinching the v closer and closer together pretty good with that Okay, pretty soon some lateral hinge points appear in this uh, in our tube-like structure. Uh, so the same thing's going to happen into the cells here. Um, so here, first we had some shroom soak into here. Now we're going to have some shroom. It must be floating around here, but it gets into this area right here, and uh, the, it induces the cytoskeleton to pinch here so we got triangular shaped cells in this region and that causes another hinge so these are called the lateral hinge points uh, and that makes it now it's more tube shaped isn't it? it's not a flying V anymore and remember these cells are still trying to claim their territory they're still growing this way to fill this bridge so it's pinching this more and more into a tube step four let's create the tube talk about the neural crest cells about day 21 combination of the hinge points and the inward growth of the ectoderm cell pushes the dorsal most tip uh, of the neural folds together. When they touch, they fuse into one unit. And now we have created our neural tube, which initially is hollow. Uh, it'll The cells will be secreted from the periphery of the neural tube, uh, and it'll fill into a solid neural tube uh, very quickly. It should be noted that somites have already formed, about five, I think about five somites have formed at this point, which we're going to talk about in the next video. Okay, so here's the closing. Kind of as we showed you before, these cells are growing, growing, growing. It's pushing, pushing, pushing these two ends closer and closer together. And finally, the ectoderm has reclaimed its territory, it's lost, and it's pinched off the the once was the neural plate now these neuroectoderm cells are in the mesoderm and we have ourselves a neural tube and this is going to fill in 
eventually and become solid. But look at this. We got some new little cells that have popped up here. Um, right on the lateral, this is not quite correct. It's only the lateral border here of this dorsal. This is dorsal up here. The dorsal most lateral border uh, of these neuroectoderm cells, they morph into a new cell type super important cell type and those are called the neural crest cells. They're very similar to mesenchymal cells that have created the mesoderm. These guys, but they're even crazier. They can migrate to the tip of your nose, to the tip of your uh, toes. They're very uh, movable. So we need to talk about those uh, a little bit. So as I just said in the dorsal most region, uh, the neural folds fuse to form the lateral most region of the neural folds. Um, what did that say? Did that make sense? Uh, just as I said before, the dorsal most lateral region of the neural folds, there's some new genes being turned on in those cells. And it's basically these cells are going to undergo an epithelial to mesenchymal transformation. Remember, the bottle cells did that to form the mesoderm. The same thing happens here. Uh, <clears throat> and once they lose their cams or, or their junctional complexes, these cells can migrate. They grow pseudopodia, uh, and they can literally swim. Here they've swum. They were stuck here, but uh, epithelial to mesenchymal transformation has occurred and now they can swim and they swam right out of this neuroectoderm and they they're hanging out here when the trochoid tube is first formed these things are going to migrate everywhere as we're going to see in the next video uh, but these are mesenchymal cells they're called neural crest cells because they're still neural tissue okay <clears throat> let's take a closer look uh, some authors including carlson cause these cells are so important they're called the fourth germ layer I like to think of them as the neural germ layer uh, because they create so much of the brain and glia cells. In fact, here's something for you guys, you students, to memorize right now because this is a great board question, great my question. Uh, what do these germ cells get, give rise to in general? Several different type of nerves, which we'll hopefully get to in this series. Uh, several types of glial cells are created by these neural crust cells. Uh, connective tissue bone, uh, pigmented cells called melanocytes, which give our skin and hair its color. They all are born from these neural crest cells, so they're very, very important cells. What, more a little deeper, what specifically makes them form? Because they were happy neuroectoderm cells. Why did they have to turn into a new cell type? It's that darn BMP again. Uh, the cells in the center uh, secrete no BMP, right? Their BMP is turned off, so they become neuroectoderm cells. The cells far lateral, uh, they're ectoderm cells because their BMP levels are high, but the ones right on the border between the ectoderm and the neuroectoderm, th those cells are exposed to a medium, or they express a medium, kind of a medium uh, level of BMP, not too high, not too low, just a kind of moderate level of BMP expression. That moderate level is enough to convert them uh, into neural crest cells. Uh, so it's all about that darn BMP again. Okay. Uh, specifically, the medium, what is the medium, a little deeper even, that medium level of BMP turns on genes in those neuroectoderm cells that the other neuroectoderm cells are turned off, but uh, that medium level BMP exposure turns on these transcription factors, uh, MSX1, MSX2, DLX5, PAX3, PAX7 are all turned on. Those transcription factors in turn turn on other genes in those same cells, like Fox, FOXD3, SOX10, ETS1. Those are the genes that really make these neural crust cells. I'm not going to test you on uh, much of this, or if I, w I'll tell you exactly what I want you to know in a like a uh, my pre kind of a review for the test. If I want you to know any of this stuff, I'll tell you. But I just wanted to get you to understand how complicated it is to make these neural crest cells, and this is the same for all the cells. It's and we still don't even understand the entire story yet. 
Uh, we talked about epithelial to mesenchymal transformation again, uh, just a little bit deeper on that. Remember, in order for the cells to escape uh, the neural plate or the um, the neural ectoderm cells, they have to get out. They don't want to become trapped in the tube. They have to migrate, so they have to lose their cams, and that's what they do. Uh, in fact, the type 1 cams are all turned off. So not only the if there's any E cadherins left holding those cells together, they're turned off. Even the N cadherins, remember the neural ectoderm cells have of the neural plate, they have E cad or N cadherins turned on to hold them together. These are even turned off here. What are they turned off by? Snail 1 and 2, something called twist, uh, FOXA3 genes. These are all transcription factors. Uh, that have to do with turning off the cam so they can spread apart uh, and uh, fly out of there. Okay, now let's go back to the closure of the tube because we the tube doesn't the whole tube doesn't close at one time. Uh, it closes in the middle region first, and the middle region uh, of this structure is actually turns out to be not the brain, not the not the body or the the pelvic region, it's the cervical region that closes first. Just a little bit of it does. Uh, and the closure occurs as the somites form, which we'll talk about in the next video. Um, so therefore, it's closed. You have a tube in the middle of this thing in the cervical region, but you have free openings cranially and caudally. Uh, these are called neural pores, these openings. Uh, they freely communicate with the amniotic cavity. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not going to have time to edit that out. Sorry about that. I should have brought some water with me. Um, so the ones toward the cranial region are called the cranial neural pore. Or the one toward the cranial region is the cranial neural pore. The one toward the caudal region is the caudal neural pore. Watch out for those darn AKAs of anterior and posterior. Anterior neural pore is an AKA uh, for cranial and posterior for caudal. So you author might call it a posterior neural pore. They're just holes. Let's look at a picture. Here's a nice hole. So here's the cervical region and we got closure of the tube here. Like we like we've taught you, but I didn't tell you the whole story because the whole tube doesn't close at the same time. It closes like a zipper like fashion in both directions about the same speed. I think the caudal region closes a little bit later. This closes a little bit later. Here's a more advanced one here. This thing's almost completely closed up. You can see all the somites we're going to talk about next. Uh, it still has just a little bit of the caudal neural pore and the cranial neural pore are open. Okay, but that's what it looks like about day 21. Some fun facts about these neural pores. The cranial one does close quicker about day 25. There's about 18 to 20 somites formed at this part point. Caudal one's a little slower. Uh, day 28, this one closes, about 25 somites uh, formed at that point. Once the last one closes, the process of neurulation is complete. Uh, and the central nervous system, we now have not a flat plate, but we have a tube uh, that's formed. Okay, There are, I should point out now, there's some really nasty birth defects that can occur when this tube doesn't close up. Uh, and it's left open like this, or maybe it's all closed, but maybe these two segments didn't close right here. It's called spina bifida, right? Um, we'll get into that in class uh, lecture some more, and I'm sure you'll get that as you go through the program in neurology. Neuroscience will talk about that. Um, this is, I should have warned you, gross picture here. This is a really rare, but this poor baby who didn't make it or this fetus, uh, there was no closure. Uh, so and, and it's usually not this extreme. Usually there's just everything is closed up. It looks like you know a normal back, uh, but maybe one little part didn't. Uh, but when the entire region like this doesn't form, the neural tube didn't close here, so the spinal cord uh, didn't close. There's no dura around the spinal cord and there's no bone around the spinal cord. No bone was formed. If the neural tube doesn't close, you don't form bone. Um, this is called a rachisis. Uh, uh, some people call it a rachisis. Uh, and there's a cranial schisis, officially pronounced craniosis. Uh, that occurs when the skull doesn't form and the brain 
is uh, out there with no dura or any bones to protect it. And this poor uh, child or fetus, uh, he demonstrates both a uh, rachisis and a craniosis at the same time. So that gives you an idea of how important it is to cr properly form this neural tube. Okay, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. We'll definitely talk about mesoderm uh, segmentation and formation of the somites.